I just heard a few days ago that Rooster Teeth is no longer going to exist. For better and for worse, Rooster Teeth has been around for a really long time. They've given us one of my favorite channels to watch on YouTube that I was actually introduced to through Uptown Duck, Funhouse. And Funhouse has been, honestly, a beacon in the dark for me in some instances. <laughs> Ooh, that's a big mouth. Yoda D. <laughs> I've talked about it before on the channel. I don't want anyone to like be concerned for me. Like I am safe. I am good. I am a pretty happy person most of the time. But at the same time, I do get sad because I am a human being. And like everyone, I have periods in my life where I'm not doing too hot. And through some of these times, Funhouse has been a beacon in the darkness for me. I'm seeing a lot of people that are talking about this news and a lot of people that are fans are kind of saying the same thing. And um, there was a day when I was having like a really, really rough day. And Funhouse did a video that was part of their DC done days that they did a while ago. It is literally the inspiration for a profile pic of me <laughs> on one of them, um, on like one of my messaging uh, sort of apps for work. Elise did this episode where she was basically Batman. And Elise is honestly one of the funniest people on the channel. I love Elise so much. Both her and James are honestly like, I feel like couples goals based on what I've seen of them together. Granted, I don't know them in person, so I don't I don't know what their relationship is like, but I just love both of them. I think they're both hilarious. I think Elise especially is one of the most hilarious people that has ever existed on the planet Earth. Hi, I'm Gwen Stefani. Elise basically dressed up as Batman and they played through some Batman game. I don't know. The great thing about Funhouse is that like it's gaming, but really it's just entertainment. So there's just tons of jokes happening while they play a game and the game is almost <laughs> like less important. And that's what I love about it. I mean, not a lot of channels game like this. Gaming is honestly such a serious thing. Sometimes on the YouTube platform, it's like, oh, we're going to game and we're so serious. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But Funhouse is just goofy with it. And I mean, they do also really play games, though. So <laughs> that is the thing. They have the whole Soul Hole series where they play soul-like games and it's ridiculous. This video just came at a time where I was in the lowest of low places and Elise... Being Batman made me laugh so hard. Like my face hurt. I was laughing so hard. And it was something that I just so needed that day. I don't know how I would have made it through that day if I didn't have that video. I There are days when I've also come back to it. I watch it on a loop. It's one of my favorite Funhouse videos that has ever existed. And it's a recent video. How do you think this works? <laughs> There's no way on earth. And I think that's the thing that kind of shocked me. Like, I knew Rooster Teeth wasn't in a good place. I don't think they've been in a good place for some time. They've had a lot of controversies over the last few years, and a lot of people come out that basically say, like, working with Rooster Teeth legitimately was, like, harmful to their mental health and was awful. But for the most part, I have heard that Funhouse has still been a pretty good place from people that have worked there and worked with that team. So... To see Funhouse, because they're under that umbrella, have to be dissolved. It's really upsetting to me. And I'm like, I just think as well of everyone that's at the office and everyone that works there and that works in the studio and like both in front of the camera and behind the cameras and to have that rug sort of pulled out from under you. Like, I think from what I've heard when other people have been talking about it who worked with Rooster Teeth and who are kind of doing response videos to it, it sounds like a lot of people knew for a while that like this was coming. But you're never, even if you're thinking, oh, this might be a thing that's coming, it doesn't mean that you're like super prepared when it happens. And I jumped into um, like Jacob's live stream, like the day it happened. And he definitely seemed to be having a rough day, but was in pretty good spirits building Gundams. It was honestly like such a sweet, stream and I would say if you are a fan of Fun House or you know any Rooster Teeth things just make sure you support the people that you actually like because a lot of people don't realize with a lot of these channels that are like owned by somebody and they're like a whole production and it's a whole like network or something like that that a lot of those folks like do probably have their own platforms although I am looking for Elise and I haven't found anything yet I feel like everything she does is like 
ingrained with rooster teeth. So, like, Elise, please tell me you have something. I'm just waiting, though, for news to come. I'm sure once there is something that I can follow, I can, I can go do that. I know Elise has a book. Don't know if that's with rooster teeth. But yeah, this is this is also why it's really important, I think, when you find even um, a channel that's like a group channel, that if there's people that you like, you go and check them out if they have socials, because you never know when things are going to end. Like, you just really never know. Unfortunately, YouTube is a very unpredictable place, and things change. And I think with what's happened with Funhouse and Rooster Teeth is that things have been changing for a while, and there just hasn't really been big enough moves to grow into like sort of a new market. Alana did a video on this and she kind of talked about just how like gaming channels that are like groups in general just aren't really a thing anymore. Like it's a lot of individuals gaming and then they like team up with their friends to play a game like online or something like that, like Lethal Company or like Fall Guys or take your pick. And I definitely would agree that I think that's the way that the market is moving. So part of it is market changes, but I think it's also just the outside perspective. It looks to me like it's just been mismanagement for some time that finally has taken hold. And Warner Brothers is, you know, looking at their where they're spending and what they're making and they're just not making money there. YouTube is also just going through, I think, a really weird time. I mean, I think all content creation and social media platforms are. There's also just, I think, a disconnect between when people see numbers and consider like what is successful for content creators and really understanding like what people make. Like even just myself, I don't make enough through my content right now to just do my own content. And I make pretty good money, but I also live in a pretty expensive place. And honestly, I think we all live in expensive places right now. <laughs> it's the economy we're in. Oh boy. So, I mean, a lot of people think you make more than you do when you work as a content creator is all I'm saying. And I think the same goes for a lot of these studios. And you have to think about, they also have the cost of all of these people's you know, hourly or salary or however they're being paid, whatever their, or their contract, whatever their deal is with them. So you're not just now, it's not just an individual doing it like me, I'm just myself. And you know, there's a few other people that work with me, um, slash for me, and that's it. It's not a whole studio and I do it in, you know, my place. So imagine now the overhead costs that you have with something like Funhouse, like, yeah, but I'm surprised because I just thought their memberships were doing so well. Like I've been in Funhouse streams and seen them just crush it in terms of the memberships that they're gifted. But it just goes to show that like even when myself as someone that knows some of the other sides of the finances as someone that has a channel and, and gets to, you know, see what that looks like on the day to day. Even I was thinking, oh, but I bet Funhouse has to be fine because Funhouse definitely is doing well, right? To see that they're also being cut is a surprise to me based on just how well their memberships do. I just wanted to come in and kind of say that I am sad. I am, I'm hopeful for all these amazing, talented people that they will land on their feet. And I just wanted to send out like good vibes to everyone that's affected by this because regardless of what you think of like Rooster Teeth, and, you know, all of the controversies, which, yes, they've had some really bad ones. So, in a way, it's kind of like a sigh of relief. But regardless of what you think, these are real people. In some cases, most of their life has been this company. And now they have to go look for a new job. And they don't know what they're going to do. And that, to me, is so terrifying. Like... I just think about, like, even my work with Top 10 Nerd, like, I've been there for five years. It's a long time to be somewhere. And some of these people, like, Barbara was talking about it. They did, like, a stream that just sounded like it was super sad over at Rooster Teeth. Barbara talked about her time with Rooster Teeth and just how it's been, like, more than a decade. And she's scared because this has been, like, her whole life. Like, before she was even at Rooster Teeth, she was a fan of Rooster Teeth. And that's how she basically got offered the position. And I just... My heart goes out to them as someone that, you know, has been with the company for a long time and sometimes I just can't imagine, like, not being there and to have to, like, face that reality and have it not be on your terms. <sighs> yeah, that sucks. That sucks. It just sucks. I hope 
as things continue to shift that everyone finds a new place and is successful in their endeavors. I know I will be going to support them. I've already started to make sure I'm like following everyone everywhere because I wasn't doing that. And then I was like, oh gosh, <laughs> I didn't even know that people had channels and stuff though. So I've just had to like frantically like look for everything. I was following some people on socials, thank goodness. So it's pretty easy to find people when you're following them on socials. But yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a weird time. We're in a weird time. I think it's a transitional period. And I think just what people want is they just want a lot more like one-on-one -on -one connection with people, which is something that I've always endeavored to do. And I think it's uh, harder to do with certain ideas. And so it makes sense that this is not continuing. But my goodness, they just celebrated their 20th and that was a celebration. And now here we are. It's also scary just to think of how easy, well, I guess it's not easy. It's been coming for a long time, but just when you think about something that feels like it's so secure and like tangible to see it crumble is a bit disturbing but that is where we're at and also yeah a lot of these platforms are fickle beasts a trend can change and all of a sudden everything is gone and you could just like lose your entire channel overnight just even from like a mistake to be honest so <laughs> it's a very it's a very scary place sometimes to be in making content as rewarding as it is it is also uh scary you're living on the edge and i i hate to see people fallen off that edge and I hope that you know they all have parachutes I'm I'm my fingers are crossed everyone's gonna land and be fine everyone's so talented I can't see that not happening but anyways I just wanted to talk a little bit about this because it was it really hit me in my heart a bit um especially with Funhouse I'm really gonna miss the channel and I'm really sad that they're not continuing I really hope they can find a way to somehow continue or you know as they go to do other things we can get at least collaborative videos with the team coming together again I hope they all stay friends and that they're all okay. That's it for me on this one. I don't really have anything else to say. I just wanted to kind of say goodbye and um, say thanks, Funhouse. Thanks. You made my life better a lot of days. And for that, I, I really thank you. And you also just taught me about, I think, prioritizing fun in content and making sure that when you're doing something, like that you're just having a good time. I think that's so important as a content creator and as a human being. All right, friends, that's it for this one. I'll see you next time. Until then, please, please, please support content creators that you like and make sure you follow them everywhere just in case. And, uh, and yeah, stay nerdy. All right.